in the concept of fibula the first point is what if the fibula is fractured whether that requires fixation or not here we need to differentiate between a direct impact fracture of the fibula and a rotational injury fracture of the fibula in a rotational injury fracture of the fibula there may be syndesmotic damage and these fractures need to be fixed the other point is if the fibula fracture is 5 cm from the ankle joint these need to be fixed to achieve stability in the ankle joint whereas if the fracture is more than 5 to 6 cm from the ankle joint these fractures could be neglected the second point is what needs to be done if the fibula is not fractured now this is a controversial question there have been authors who advocate a fibular primary fibular osteotomy when a primary nailing of the tibia is done in all cases whereas some authors do not advocate on it it has been proved that an isolated tibia shaft fracture without a fibula fracture will heal similarly when a primary nailing is done without having to osteotomize the fibula shaft the concept as advocated by few surgeon is that if we do not osteotomize the fibula there will not be collapse at the fracture site and hence there might be delayed union of the tibia but this concept is not been proved and hence a primary fibular osteotomy is not advocated i am talking of a fresh fracture in which there is an isolated fracture of the tibia so i hope this solves the concept of fibula what to do when it is fractured and what to do if it is not fractured the third point is with regards to locking bolts the trajectory few centers follow the trajectory of the locking bolts from medial to lateral and few centers from lateral to medial the centers that follow it from lateral to medial do it with the purpose that if the bolts are from medial to lateral since tibia is a subcutaneous bone on the medial side these bolts might be proud and might cause mechanical irritation and the patient might complain post operatively and hence they prefer passing it from lateral to medial in which case these bolts will not become prominent there is no biomechanical advantage as such of passing the bolt lateral to medial or medial to lateral these bolts are meant for a purpose of interlocking the nails that is to prevent rotational forces acting on the nail and causing rotational instability and hence interlocking is done so it does not matter whether the bolts are passed from medial to lateral or lateral to medial the second point is with regards to whether the bolts need to be countersunk when passed medial to lateral the thought process is that these bolts will be proud and cause mechanical irritation and hence if we countersink it and cause the nail the bolt head to be buried it will not have any mechanical effects although the thought process is valid but we need to remember is that by countersinking the bolt we are actually letting it sink within the bone and this might cause problems for removal in the further years we always need to remember that an implant when inserted could not get the necessary outcome that is the patient might have infection or non unions or even mal unions and these implants might need to be removed at a remote time and hence we as surgeons need to keep all provisions possible for removal of this implant if we countersink and bury these bolts it might become extra difficult for the surgeon trying to remove these bolts and hence countersinking is not advocated if the bolts are passed appropriately of the appropriate size even when tibia is a subcutaneous bone it does not matter unless the skin is too fragile and friable especially in elderly individuals who do not have enough subcutaneous fat in these individuals maybe these bolts can cause mechanical irritation 
but then these could always be removed once there is healing at the fracture site. 